pick up on the strategy here. Who, who walks in first? Get out if Pete walks in front of him, or if Michael edges his way in first? Yesterday, Pete was waiting for Ivan Isovich, but today we haven't seen him yet. Michael? Mental game here we can look at live. See if they look at each other. Yesterday, Pete and Gorn didn't even look at each other. Yeah. Now you see the door opening back there on the left Scott side, no right where that man no is there walking, no going in. That's, that's Ken Farrar, the supervisor, is going to get Pete. Said, all right, it's showtime. Here he comes. Right. Thanks for your patience. Have a good match. Here we go. Here we go. Good luck, Michael. Well, they didn't greet each other. They didn't say, hi, how are you? Good luck. <laughs> they will let their tennis do their talking. When we come back, we'll let you see for yourself who will be the number one player in the world. That's on the line here at the U.S. Open. We come back. Tim Ryan, Mary Carrillo, and John McEnroe will have the call. Enjoy the tennis. See you later. The U.S. Open Championship first, but also the number one ranking. If Sampras wins, he will be number one. And if Chang wins for the first time, he will move into the top spot. Hi, everyone. Tim Ryan, joined by Mary Carrillo and John McEnroe here at the stadium court, ready for this championship match. And well, we often hear that expression, speed kills. We've seen Michael Chang exhibit it from the time he was a young player on the tour. He seems to be even faster, John. Well, Tim, that's his big weapon, and that's what's going to win him the match, I feel, today, along with his intensity, his aggressiveness, his, his quickness around the court. Uh, Pete Sampras is a very quick player, but not in Michael Chang's range. He's got the big surge, Sampras. Chang's got the movement. This was a, a point yesterday against Andre Agassi. He's content to run down balls from all over the court and hit winners from any angle. And he destroyed Agassi in the semifinals yesterday. And I feel like he has a very, very good chance. Pete Sampras, I don't think he's going to be at 100%. I picked Pete before the tournament. I think I'm going to have to give a slight edge to Michael Chang right here, right now. All right, so he must be allowing for his good service return as well then against Sampras. And also, serve. hopefully, like my brother said, getting some more first serve points. And if he can get that percentage up above 50%, which I know he hasn't done in six matches, but he is capable of it. I know that. <laughs> All right, well, Mary Carrillo, let's talk about Pete Sampras, the defending champion. Of course, he won here in 1990. But do you kind of feel that his loss in 1992 was perhaps a turning point for the better? I really think that was a big deal. Pete Sampras had gotten a little bit sick in his semifinal win against Jim Kerr. He wasn't feeling 100%. Went out against Stefan Edberg in the 1992 final. And though they had split sets and Sampras had had a break point opportunity in the third, he just went away and faded. And of course, it was a great defense of title for Stefan Edberg. But boy, Sampras hated losing. He hates getting to the finals of these majors and then not winning. And it's hard to beat Pete Sampras on Sunday. I mean, since that <laughs> loss, I mean, uh, this guy just, you better go after him on like a Thursday night or a Friday morning. But as I say, once he gets to this position, he, w he says nobody remembers who came, who came in second. And uh, it hasn't had happened with him. And that, I think, is a major edge. Of course, Michael Chang's been disappointed in some major finals lately. He lost in the Australian Open final this year to Boris Becker. He got to last year's French Open final and lost that one to Thomas Musser. They're both great warriors. And I think also Michael Chang likes being the underdog. He was a great underdog yesterday against Andre Agassi, even though he's seated higher. He likes that underdog role. Sampras is obviously the overdog, if there is such a dog. Are you going with the overdog? I'm going for the overdog. I think he's just got a little too much game on this hard court. They're both great hard quarters. I still like Pete. An All-American Championship for the U.S. Open title when we return. Ladies and gentlemen, we should like... Memphis on hard courts in a semifinal, he won in straight sets. And in the final in Hong Kong, also on a hard court, Sampras won in three sets. 25 years of age, born in Washington in the East, he grew up in California where he learned most of his tennis, now lives in Florida. 52 wins, eight defeats in match play in 1996, five championships, but none of them a grand slam. And this is his last opportunity. He wants it badly for his late coach and friend, Tim Gullickson. And here are the gentlemen that uh, he conquered en route to this final. There were some difficult times. Second round against Yuri Novak. Struggled around, moped around, prevailed 6-4 in the fifth. Was really up for Philippousis in a battle of big servers and uh, John Newcomb, the great Australian, felt maybe Pete had played his final in that match because he seemed so ready. 
And then after the uh, dramatic win over Karachi in five, uh, he dismissed the number four seed, Goran Ivanisevic, with just a little blip in the tiebreak set. Michael Chang, ranked number three, seeded number two, and uh, proved he deserved to be here. 24 years of age, born mm -hmm. also in the eighth in Hoboken, New Jersey. Grew up in Placentia, California, now lives in Nevada. 55 wins, 12 defeats. His match record this year with three titles. Finalist at the Australian. He defeated Jaime Onsens and then Neville Godwin. Tough match against Vince Spadia. And then uh, getting past Jakob Plasek. And another somewhat tough one against Javier Sanchez before dismissing Agassi in a surprisingly easy match in the semifinal. Straight sets, the best tennis he played throughout the tournament. The umpire is Rich Kaufman. And he is from New Paltz, New York. And it's call time, and the players are greeted by the crowd. Surprisingly, still a big crowd. The people found dry places to stand in under the stadium. And uh, they have been here for nearly three hours since the end of the women's match. Deppi Graf prevailing in straight sets over Monica Sellers. still high, but the temperatures dropped about 10, 15 degrees. gone down as we see Michael hit that forehand winner. Not a very good half volley from Pete there. And I think that's going to help Sampras's chances. So even though the humidity is still fairly high, a lot better off than he was two and a half hours ago. It's probably about two and a half hours extra butterflies they got having to wait this out. Wonder if they'd even play this match. And that's tough. Service eight, his first. 30 15. 30-15. Well, if he can serve like this today, it's already a couple big first serves. He's going to be in good shape against Michael Chang. Oh. In certain ways, I just feel the players want to get this match over with. 30. Michael Chain, for example, we mentioned, has to play in Chile Tuesday. Play an exhibition. You think it'll be a, a bit of a letdown for that match? <laughs> play Marcelo Rios on clay? <laughs> Somehow, I don't think that's in his and mind. And the agent here. says they haven't decided if it rains tonight, what, what would happen? Uh, give me a break. <laughs> Another race right to the same corner. Swinging it out, not the uh, big MPHs on those two aces out there. 106 for this one, 101 for the last one. Well, he's sending Michael a message there. I'm going to swing you out wide, and sooner or later, Michael's going to have to move that way, and then he'll serve the big one up the middle. It's got great variety on that serve. Go, Pete. Game Pete. So Pete Sampras with an easy hold for game one. 